Sports, welcome to actually the quarterfinals of the Indu League that I've been hosting. And yeah, we actually made it that far. I haven't uploaded too many battles, and it actually is 2 2. Unfortunately, haven't been able to actually have most of the battles here, or uh, basically, the few that I did have was kind of interrupted. So I'm lucky to make playoff. I'll definitely won't take that away. And we're going up against the Bazika, which is another player clearly who made playoff. Uh, as you guys can see on the team here, we have a few quick ones that either has been banned from NU or in some extent actually isn't NU. For example, you guys see Sharpedo, for example. That one is with rough skin on my side, so it's not with speed boost. We voted that in. I drafted that modern and have been a tremendous threat. Versus Basika, this is actually a choice scoffed variant with Destiny Bond, Liquidation Crunch, and Earthquake. Um she was about to release a part of my opponent's side here, clearly. Voted for the same very same reason. Since it's kind of mixed viability in our you made it for us at least, made able to, to drop to uh, well. Clearly, in, in you here, so going to host this Lee um, further down ahead, actually, with, I would say, with some variety, but this is the playoff, we are going against Basika, we're going against what I'm bringing, and basically just talk about what we're doing, and we have a choice but an emblem, we have a, a type null with a hidden power, grass, and... Uh, Try attack, red sleep talk. It was made for his Oma Star and Agron. Not seeing Oma Star was a very, very happy feeling for me because this is basically the type null was not only was it redundant for the battle, but also meant that I didn't even need to correct myself against that. Uh, Vika Vault Agility set with the Buggy Hum C Road and More, which is a UU actually now, as you guys might actually already know. Um wasn't in you and we were drafting so with that said yeah it's a score choice scarf variant modest uh and we also have the caracosta a very very bulkier variant uh which being impish with almost max attack to get it with some hp and uh, it's basically a rumor to set being skull stone edge knockoff and stealth rocks so yeah my opponent brought a very tough team i definitely say you know we, we see clearly scrafty and uh, we also see that the play button is just way, just in front of everything. <laughs> uh, Glides about clearly. A uh, Rodon fan here, which is definitely a default or choice cost, but depending on what, what it's going to bring. Uh, Incineroar, which is not hidden ability intimidate, which is luckily for us because I do believe that kind of fends off Embo to some extent. Silver Valley normal, and then we have Duition. So I would say his biggest threat. Uh, for this bell, it's Goliath's part. I think Goliath's part does a hefty chunk of damage, and definitely Sharpedo being Scotland is very tough. Same thing with Scrafty, which I think after Dragon Dance can threaten me quite a lot, actually. While the Vol, due to its buggy MC, can take a knock of a plus one, it is very unlikely to take two of those, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm putting myself in risk by doing so. So with that in mind, we're just going to start off the game. So my opponent started off with Sil Valley, as I myself start off with Rodan Maw. Um, he is actually fast for me, going for a parting shot, which means that he scarfed himself, which works for us. And considering he doesn't have a grounded Pokemon, I'm very free to go for a Volt Switch and do a 35% or 31% on that Pokemon. Now, I send in my type Null mainly because I am specially defensive. I don't necessarily fear the Rotom as they were special oriented ourselves. I don't I don't mind Will-O-Wisp. So it brings in Incineroar. It is very, very assault vested. But I have really no real switch in here unless you uh, count Caracosta. And with that in mind, I kind of prefer just getting some chip on this one and then bait the Flare Blitz. Unfortunately for me, he do go for a U-turn here and he goes back to Rotom. Now, my Rotom more is a fair switch in here. While Air Slash does some damage, I still feel I can't be able to withstand um, damage output there. So, um, didn't necessarily do any damage to me and he switches back to his Incineroar. And um, since we know it's Assault Vest, I can go directly for actually a Volt Switch directly, go into my Caracosta. Luckily for me, my opponent do decide to say and go for Flare Blitz. It does a hefty 8% here. We were able to set up rocks. I actually do kind of like that Leftovers recover more than his Flare Blitz. It's kind of scary. Uh, he do decide to stay in. I don't necessarily fear that as Earthquake did 30. So yeah, that looks... Caracosta is really, really heavy. So... 
Unfortunately for me here, my opponent do go for, decide to go for Naka. I was trying to actually get his Flare Blitz on, or Naka, or Flare Blitz actually on the switch out. So, kind of fail on that one. Luckily for me, as I switch out to Scrafty, I do get a very, very strong crit here, which puts his uh, Scrafty at range where a second liquidation will finish him off. And Scrafty is basically not a threat anymore. Really, really fortunate for us as uh, my opponent here brings in the Rotom. Um, at this point, I do kind of want to preserve that goes to my Rotom fan as my opponent go for an Air Slash. Now, I should say this. I should have switched out to Karakasta here, not getting my Rotom so low. Uh, even though, uh, since I'm not able to finish him off with a Volt Switch, clearly. But also, I kind of forced my Type Null here to come in and... Um, Luckily, I do get a rest off here. I think that's really important as since it doesn't have a defogger, it means that if it decides to switch out Silver Valley, it could be his own defogger and I feel it's highly unlikely with the, being a scarf and whatnot. So, uh, Duition comes in here. I don't want to take a risk with this Pokemon in particular. So, I decide to go directly into Sharpedo. My opponent here does a really strong play, going for a single beam, which of course will knock up Sharpedo. It's really good of him. As I can bring in the Totem Vicabolt and go directly for Agility as he brings in the Silver Valley. Now, I was in a point where whether or not I should switch out this. We know it was scarfed, is whether or not it's scarfed to beat Sil uh, my Vicabolt up to plus two. Unfortunately for me, it kind of is and also gets the burn, which means that all of a sudden Goliath's part becomes really dangerous. I would have been a stronger spot here, I actually just switched right out to the Karakas I consider we knew already that it was scuffed. So I put against the wall here as Goliath's part comes in, and there's really not a whole lot I can do. Well, I will decide to switch in my Steel Valley due to its HP. First impression doesn't necessarily do that much. I mean, I've lost my Violet, but. I'm still going strong as Hidden Power Grass is going to connect. He is actually a Red Orb or Red Card, and that brings in my Vicka Vault. And I really can't pull up. I just felt that you know, since we're faster, I can force him a Vicka Vault. I lose Vicka Vault, so Duition becomes strong already. Now, I go directly here for Flare Blitz, clearly knocking out the Goliath spot. He's not Aqua Jet, which is really good for us. And at this point, due to that, actually, there is no way Duition can take a Flare. Banded Flare Blitz, I'm sure, as we're gonna knock that out. Do we do get a lucky crit? I am a bit unsure whether or not that necessarily matters. And of course, Incineroar dies to Stealth Frog, so we are able to actually knock out and win here 4-0 uh, against Basika. The only thing I'll say that I definitely I feel I had a straight advantage in this battle, not only by the matchup alone, but the one thing that stood out for me was that you know the crit on his Scraft did really did it easier for me. And um, it basically meant that he couldn't set up Dragon Dances with his Crafty. Now, had that happened, that is, a liquidation wouldn't and just do around 40, I wouldn't be forced to switch into my Rotom more. And while I, since I was Scarfed, I would be able to outspeed that, as well as I did enough damage to actually, you know, nullify the issue, that is. If that failed, my second play after that would have been to actually Sucker Punch Bandit with Embor, hoping I was in range. That said, it is... 50-50 uh, on that, whether or not I would have been successful or not, and, you know, it's just debatable whether or not that would have helped. That said, um, it still led, it made the game a lot easier for me, and it made the game a lot tougher for Basique to really find a way back, and I definitely believe that was such a decisive thing. I don't believe 4-0 is representative of the game itself, since, let's face it, both uh, my Rotom more was definitely a range of dying. Uh, Krakasta wasn't necessarily healthy. Ember was my last shot of winning. And luckily for us, I guess you'd say that due to him not having Aqua Jet on his uh, Egoli support, I was able to actually just withstand the damage and retaliate kind of effortlessly. So, yeah. With that said, guys, I really want to thank you, of course, for watching. And, uh, yeah, we're in semifinals, which is really cool. Um, didn't expect that, consider how this... Well, how it ended in this league, I definitely wasn't doing too strong there. I was just lucky to get just get into playoff. So, uh, winning the quarterfinals feels kind of unfair, but I'm glad I won. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you, of course, Basika. I really thought you did a strong game here. I'm really, really sad that uh, it ended like that. I definitely believe you had a... You deserved a better game that you got in against me. So, if everybody's watching, I think we're doing just so. And I'll see you in the next video. Until then, take care. Bye.